hi guys welcome to data driven tutorial uh, guys i'm so excited for today's um tutorial so we're going to be analyzing survey data and this is the one of the most difficult tasks because we will be working with open-ended survey so essentially there are surveys whereby customers are just just have to write anything that they feel about the company or anything that they don't like so there is no yes or no or uh, some sort of like how we structure the data in a way like how we structure like the responses right so now you're faced with this challenge of like trying to find out um how you can actually uh organize this data because people write differently you can understand that even for a yes or no answer people will give different uh uh, uh result responses right some people can write yeah no yep so you have to cater for that so it's very 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 tough but i will be showing you strategies how you can actually overcome that right secondly we're going to show you how guys you can actually help your company to actually keep their customers right they increase that retention rate uh, because if you don't actually understand your customers or you don't actually respond to your customers needs They're most likely to leave. So it's very important that you shape your product or your service based on the customers needs Okay, so this is going to be way 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 too um, uh, Available tutorial for you guys because we're gonna be learning uh, some of the deep learning libraries out there so we're gonna be touching a lot of things it's a very very good tutorial for you okay so without wasting any time let me just get in right into it okay so what's going on we're working with uh, data that was actually collected uh, by a web development bootcamp organization so they're studying a bootcamp so if you're someone who teach courses or bootcamp and stuff like that then this is going to be available because you will be able to understand what students want to learn so it's available uh, for you so without wasting any time i'm just going to get straight into it right i'll be sharing this notebook with you if like you want to replicate what we're just doing right so this is how the data was structured so we have all the questions and we have all the responses okay so here i just did sample just to get one row and we can look how we can take a look at how the data looks like okay so as we can see guys for literally everyone writes everything like how useful do you find the courses that you buy online so people just write right like they just give them their, um, their um, how they think about all of the courses right so it's gonna be tough but I'm gonna hold your hand throughout the tutorial so we're gonna see how we actually solve this so the first thing that I want to do is that I want to pivot my data because as we can see that all the questions are in a column fashion. So I want to make them rows so that I can be able to filter them as we go through the questions and try to understand each question, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm renaming all my columns and reshaping them. Uh, so I'm using this uh, this function melt. So essentially what you do is that it will then... Um, help me to kind of like convert my columns into rows the equations into rows okay so that's that's what we're doing and i'm not, i'm i'm anonymizing my my users because i'm giving them the user id so if you can look at here it's very important that you remove emails token any any um sensitive information whenever you're analyzing your survey okay so that's very important that you have to anonymize your data that's what we're doing here cool then i'm renaming my column to from value to responses okay so now we're getting into nlp right this is like your typical nlp processes whereby we just have to lower all the text right we just strip all the white spaces then we have to tokenize and remove all the stop weights okay and then we have a technique called stemming and limitization so these are the words that i will say they try to keep the weights to their base right because if, for example let's say for example we have a weight like go 
going. Uh, so we can easily try to like keep it to the base, right? Like just say go. That, that's it. So if we see something like going, then we just keep it to the base. We say go. Okay. So that's what these limitization does. So those techniques are very important to kind of like go through. Okay. But uh, be conscious whenever you're playing some of these techniques. Why am I saying so? Because if you're going to apply stop weights on your data, uh, then this might actually affect you. It might not be good for you. So I'm just going to show you an example. Okay. So I'm just going to remove this function here because we said by default, we provided the stop weights. So I'm just going to run this and I want to show you something something very great something very 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 uh this is something you should be cautious of so uh, let me just cancel this i think if i printed this here so stop words consist of not or not uh consist of not like common weights right like yes yeah something like that i think or uh something like a something like that right so Whenever you're removing them, the problem with removing stop words is that sometimes, for in this case, it says not great. So if you remove stop words not, then the response will be great. Right? That's why I said you have to be cautious about removing all the stop words. You don't want to remove them all the time. Okay, guys? So it's very important that you keep that in mind also. But the bottom line is whenever we did those cleaning that we just did now limitations and um we just did all of this right lower text so this is how our data looks like and this is how we, it looks like after we clean it okay so as you can see that we don't have we don't have numbers anymore right we don't have capital letters anymore so it's normalized so i hope you understand why we're cleaning it so let's move to the second step. So the first question, right? So as, are you willing to put all your um, effort into the courses and mentorship to learn new things that can actually make you successful? Right. That was the first question. How would you then uh, approach that? Right. And you can see uh, ways that I think I didn't actually print it out, but there's a lot of responses there so there's yes yeah all right absolutely sure indeed definitely there's a lot of them so what we're doing is that we're using an nlp technique classification to say all the weights that are close to yes right then we're just providing example here i'm just providing example to say all the weights that are associated to yes these are the weights and all the weights that are associated to no these are the weights and all the words that are associated to somewhat, these are the way, right? And I'm using my NLP pipeline to kind of like now to train it on this small data. That's how powerful NLP has become, right? Right. Then what I'm doing is that I'm creating this function. So this function is essentially what it does is that it will go through each row, right? Response. Under specific survey question, I think we did filter. So the survey question we called it willing to learn, right? So under that only, then it will go through all the responses and it will try to see, it will try to classify them based on the yes, no, somewhat. Because you can imagine that we have thousands of people there, they're writing differently. Some people are writing different. So it's better if we classify them and we just do the analysis, okay? Then after that, what we want to do is just to do uh, a plot the results. And there we are, guys. Look at this. So now this we have something that we can visualize. But we couldn't because we had multiple responses yet, uh, not yet, something like that, right? So there were so many, many, many responses and all of them were different. But look at with the power of machine learning, we're able to now... Uh, train our model and it was able now to to create three categories yes no somewhat and now it is easy for us to classify each response uh response into those three categories okay 
So I'm just writing my results there. I'm not gonna go into that, guys, okay? Then let's go to the uh, second question. Would you want J Bootcamp team to host interviews with influential developers? So here we're just saying, this question just want to know if like the student would like to have interviews with like influential developers, you know, in the dev community, data science community, and machine learning community there's always influential developers some working for google uh facebook all of these guys right so some students will love to have those guys to kind of like give a talk so we just want to find out if that's the true uh that's how it is right so we can see that 30 almost like 30 percent of the student like somewhat so you know yes or no and 4% of the students said no, so they don't want any influential developers, but the majority, you know, said yes, they would love to have those majority, uh, they would love to have those influential developers to come through. So let's look at the third question, guys, we're going to go through some, we just like warming up, we're going to go through some very, 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 very interesting stuff. So stick around, you'll see as we go along. How useful do you find the courses that you usually buy online? So this question actually asks if like, you know, do students actually find value from those courses? So what I'm doing here is just to filter my those, those responses, right? So I just want all the responses under this category, okay? And we applying that uh, classification because we wanna uh, classify the responses. Okay, and now we have, we know the ratio of how do students find uh, online courses. So we can see that the 52 said somewhat, and look at this guys, 37% said yes. Wow, 9.2 said no. So they said no, they don't find online courses to be, you know, useful. But you can see that's some students most of them they're still skeptical about online courses they're not sure about them so and i'll be showing you some of the results i think let me go up i just want to show you guys their results usefulness of courses so you can see their responses like an example so someone said too much theory not enough practice i have been bored at help me uh, advance my coding so you can see, but all of these have been uh, correctly classified into the right category with the power of deep learning. Okay, guys, but we can deep deeper. We can dive deeper into the into that, right? So we might say, but what is it that they don't actually like, right? That's what the question that you might be asking. I want to know what is it that they actually don't like. What is it that? They, why are they saying that they don't find these courses to be useful? So one thing we can do is to say, okay, at the high level, let's just do a, a wet cloud just to see the weight which are popping up a lot. And look at this. It's so surprising, guys. We can see scammed. We can see buy, teach, never felt. Uh, we can see um, Udemy there. Wow. So we can see that useful is popping up a lot, but it might be that these are not useful, right? So... That's why I told you, you don't want to remove those stop weights because they're going to help us a lot. Uh, let's then, this is what is interesting, guys. Look at this. This is, you don't want to miss this part because I'm doing something, a technique whereby I'm saying, if we can then classify those responses into positive and negative, then we can look at the positiveness of why students buy courses online and we can then look at the negativeness of why students buy courses online. You see, so after we classify this, then we can actually do a portly to look at the negative and positive sentiment overall. So you can see that uh, uh, when the, the, the uh, negative sentiment is, uh, is about 52.3, guys, you can see that a lot of students, they don't find online courses to be useful. So you can see that that's somewhat. So, so we, we move from somewhat. We're not sure what this somewhat meant, but we did sentiment analysis on that somewhat, and they went through a negative side. 
So, yep, students don't find online courses to be useful. Then, what we can do is to try to look at, this is what I was telling you about the, this technique. So now because we did sentiment analysis, we can look at only at the negative responses, right? And do a wet cloud. So we can say, what are the words that are popping up on the negative? Why students don't find online courses to be useful? So you can see that scam there on your le bottom left just popped up. Oh, even Udemy, next to Udemy. So we, we can see that a lot of negative words, especially scammed, and we can see did into there just popping up. And look at this. You don't see that useful. You don't see it anymore, can you? <laughs> because these are only negative stuff, right? So if, like some people said, never, some people, you can see that at the top, someone said outdated, interesting stuff. But these negative words, they can actually help us to classify the responses because we want to give our um, uh, someone who's responsible for creating the boot camp an idea how they can actually shape their boot camp in such a way that they solve these problems that students face. OK, so what we do, we ask ourselves this question, why they don't find online courses to be useful? Because we know all the words that are popping up, we learn from this, scammed, popped up, you know, outdated, all of this, updated. So all of these words, I can now try to kind of like uh, look at them and say, okay, these are the words. How about then we create the categories, then we visualize them so that it's easy for you to understand, okay? After we have done that, look at this, guys. This is what we get. Top reasons students do not find online courses to be useful. Not useful. Yep, I know. Uh, but look at the second one. I'm not relevant and outdated. And which is true because I also went through the same patch when I was learning. And when I was learning some of the courses, you know, learning web development, software engineering, you go through these libraries which are outdated you know i remember once i was learning react and you had to learn uh, i think is it is um the the router and i think it was vision 5 and they moved to vision 6 the vision 5 was outdated on that course and like and i downloaded the vision 6 so it was painful to kind of like go through the the documentation because of that course did not help. So it kind of like I had to do the work by myself. But that's what, that's like I'm trying to, I'm just trying to show you how this actually impact. I'm just trying to like show you that I've also faced this, okay? But look at that, uh, the second, the first category there is expensive, poor teaching style, scam, guys. Look at that, it popped up at the third uh, row. So a lot of students are felt scammed, right? Like you, someone can promise you that you're going to learn this, but at the end of the day, you don't learn it. Cool. So now uh, we, we filtered all the negative stuff. We're going to filter the positive stuff. Why do students find the positive uh, or the causes to be positive, right? The causes to be useful, I meant to say. So you can look at that. Look at that useful is back again. Look at those words. Good, usually, by years, bored. Look at that. So we're going to find interesting stuff in here. You can see YouTube. Wow. I saw you. I saw Udemy on the bad stuff. Now I see YouTube on the good stuff. So <laughs> that might mean something there. But what we're going to do then is that um, we go into, because we know the categories, we're going to use them to say classify uh, based on these categories, okay? And that's what it's going to do. Because, like, we know the responses. We cleanse the data. Then we create the categories. We need human intervention there. Uh, and then we can now look at the, uh, the, the results, right? So by the look of things, look at this, purchase, the real world, practical, relevant, updated. So we can see that even relevant and updated, both on 
uh, 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 negative side of things and positive side of things it appears to show how important it is if you're creating a course to stay relevant and to make sure that your course is updated okay so that's that's the main thing based on the responses of these uh, 750 students okay so we're gonna look at the bad topic uh so this is just to create a bad topic and just uh topics around the, the responses okay guys so i'm just gonna uh go to the topics because i just want to see uh you know you can think of it we classify the responses of uh useful courses not useful okay because this helps us because we can see students that don't buy courses at all you know you, you know you can see that oh topic one it looks like this this is a topic of student that don't buy courses never bought bought any haven't bought and topic two is those ones that actually find the courses to be useful and topic three you can see that these are the ones that like youtube right so topic four we can see that uh, those students actually felt scammed okay so this is quite useful um why why do you like and dislike our boot camp this is question four so we're gonna we're gonna see why they like and dislike the boot camp uh cool so what i did here like guys like i told you this is like being creative because it's like unstructured data so you can think of it as like people are just writing how why they don't like why they don't like this and this by the way it was in the same road you can imagine how difficult this thing you can't even do sentiment analysis because it's like someone can write dislike and like in one row so you know so that's how <laughs> that's how tough it was so now like you kind of like have to like think of the box think of how you can actually uh like um a tackle something like that so one way for me it was to do name intensity recognition by saying okay cool we realize like and dislike probably we can then based looking at the data and looking analyzing the data and looking at it then we can actually create project and technology so i know that when they're going to talk about like and dislike they're going to definitely talk about the project and technologies right so we're going to do name entity recognition on the text of those responses then like i said we just filtering our data then we're using this model called con uh conscience concept okay then this is how our result look like look at it guys uh so quite 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 useful right so we can see backend project api technology so this is how the model did uh so scalability so people might want to learn a project about scalability next js technology so these are all the responses so i kind of like matched all of them to make them in a more of a uh paragraph you know so that i can look at it so look at the system design project so we can see not bad right so we have project you know this is what they like dislike and like and dislike you can do a word cloud on there look at that javascript just popped up and we have next.js we have api we have um node scraper so it's interesting to see that some student want to learn scraping okay so this is what i have to do some of the uh some of the uh words were not encoded correctly so i had to make sure that i rename them to say if something contain node just just name it node.js right if so that we don't have like some people can say react then they say react.js so i'm just like saying okay you know what anything that contain react just react.js uh that's what i'm doing okay cool technology students want to learn so let's look at that javascript number one so you won't see python you won't see deep learning you won't see data science because this was for 
web development you see the title there first of all web development so we're supposed to see react you know node.js angular those type of technical front end back end developers okay so this was not for data scientist uh survey so but we can see css next um uh, node.js typescript fundamentals like there's just a lot of stuff aws pops up there uh Wow, wow, Figma, so it's students want to learn design. So it's quite interesting, quite interesting, right? So we can then jump into the results to look at the web cloud and look at the project. I think now it's time to look at the project. So we're going to look at the project. And we can see from the web cloud that you can see design, backend, application stack. So these are the projects that they want to learn, okay? So the first project they say API full stack backend. So full stack, most students want to learn full stack and backend. So we can see API backend, right? So we can see that that's you know that's backend stuff. So and we can see web uh, design front end. So design and front end they go in hand together. It's like API and backend, right? So we can definitely see that most students wanna learn backend than front end, but but more more on full stack also. So quite interesting. So yep, these are the project, and I like that one. Git workflow, right? Like usually they don't touch it in like many courses, so it would be nice to kind of like teach Git. Uh, also scalability uh, how you scale your application it will be nice okay so here i'm using the rake algorithm to see top advisors for the boot camp right so it's like me saying now let's look at the top advisors so the rake algorithm will give each response a score right so you can see that the one here is front end, back end, all of general plumbing, everything together. And that's a good advice, right? It would be nice to have an, a tutorial that actually brings everything together. Front end, back end, auth, you know, plumbing everything together. That's awesome, right? So five minutes content series wise, that's a good advice. Just make five series, like you say five minutes, you're just covering, um, uh, let's say use effect five minutes you're just covering use state something like that right that will be good so cool now let's look at the question five what will be the one thing that everyone lacks when teaching web development so now we're looking at what actually people lack when they're teaching so that's cool uh so we're gonna now filter our data on weakness of teaching based on response so that we can get the relevant data so we just did a web cloud it's hard to understand uh, so we have to use different technique so here what i did was to use traditional machine learning to say okay if we can uh, classify our responses and we can use our principal component uh which will actually reduce our um, our our vectors then we can be able to uh visualize those okay uh that's what i did it's, it's it was something that i did it ran very fast compared to deep learning it's like it's very very fast but that's the trade-off deep learning tend to be accurate but it when running deep learning algorithm they tend to take long lot, lot of time right and using like algorithms such as k-means pca uh, they are fast compared to deep learning but they might not be as accurate compared to deep learning models okay just keep that in mind and i left this article here so if you want to understand more about this so i looked at the results and yeah so what I did then was to say, okay, cool. Let's just classify what they lack uh, based on the weight cloud. Then we can then categorize them into this. And then let's look at the results, how they look like, okay? What instructors lack when teaching? Explaining. So a lot of instructors don't actually explain. 
fundamental and basics. Don't cover the basics, detailed and depth, don't go into depth. Roadmap and path, it's important to create a curriculum whenever you're teaching, okay guys? So that's that was the question five. So let's look at question six. So this is question whereby people give testimonials. So we just wanna understand, why is this bootcamp actually good? Why do people like it? Because we can understand that in that response, they ask for testimonials. So that's why we see that thank, you know, just to say thank you. So uh, based on this, then we can now try to categorize and see where most of the response fall under. So some people said, got a job, improve my skill, increase my portfolio, best resource content, great teachers. Okay, so now we can do that and do our plot. Okay, so you can see here, improve my skills, best resource and content, great teacher, got a job, increase my portfolio. Okay, guys, so you can see that you can already see a pattern what I'm doing here. So it's a pattern. I'm getting the data, I'm filtering it, then I'm doing a word cloud to get which words are popping up. Then I'm creating the, um, uh, the, the categories, but I'm using the classifier, a deep learning algorithm to classify the responses uh, for me, okay, based on these categories. And we can see where most of them categories fall under. So how excited are you for the bootcamp, right? So doing the same thing. So we're just looking at emotional, I'm using this, uh, this this technique here whereby whereby I have to look at the emotions of the of the of the uh, uh, participants. So most of them they look excited and you know in general uh, admiration, approval, curiosity. But overall, I can say they were excited about the boot camp and they can't wait actually to start taking their courses okay so that was the that was a walkthrough of how you can actually start analyzing your data and just like giving you some techniques and how you can think of like coming up with insights even if the data is way 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 too difficult to work with right so definitely like unstructured data is very challenging like i said this is the data whereby it was an open-ended survey so there was no yes or um, no answers. So people were just like, write whatever you want about the organization. So you do understand that people are going to write. Uh, so they were not filters in a way, right? So it was kind of like hard to work through this. But anyway, we managed to go through this and uh, and get insights. So that's good. So see you guys in the next uh, tutorial. Thank you guys for tuning in.